Hello, my name is Chef Colin Roach, and today I'm going to show you how I make wicked easy sous vide barbecue ribs. Because to me, there's nothing worse than biting into some really great looking barbecue ribs and finding out they're still way too tough. But that's not going to happen with today's recipe using sous vide cooking. So, Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is some type of dry rub seasoning mixture for your ribs. Now there's many recipes out there. You can find them on the internet. You can even buy pre-packaged seasoning mixes if you want. But I'm going to show you an easy one that I use for a lot of different things. Okay, for one rack of ribs, I would use the following mixture. Two tablespoons of light brown sugar. Okay, you can use dark brown, whatever you'd like, but it's brown sugar. Two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Put that in there too. This is really going to add some sweetness. Then we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of table salt in there. About a half a teaspoon of paprika. You could use Spanish or Hungarian. One's just a little sweeter. doesn't really matter. I also like to use about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And again, these, rest, these uh, ratios are just a guide. If you like more garlic, add more. Okay, then I've got some onion powder, about a quarter teaspoon. Dump that in there. Again, mix it all up, get it all incorporated. Now, this is going to not only make the crust on our ribs, you know, but it's also going to give it flavor and create that nice bark that we want. Okay, here I'm going to have mustard powder. This is a great seasoning to add to it. Again, about a quarter teaspoon of that in there. And lastly, I have a combination of ground coriander and kind of a little pinch of chili powder. Okay, put that in there as well. And now we mix it all in. Get it well blended. This will be our spice mixture for a rack of ribs. You might even be able to get two, but you want to be generous when you put it on the ribs because, again, that's going to, what's going to provide that flavor. Okay, there we go. Okay, the second step after we've made our spice blend is to prepare our ribs. Now, when you buy ribs in the store, uh, they'll come with a membrane, a real thin membrane on the back of them. That a lot of people just ignore, they leave it on. But I'm going to show you an easy way just to remove that because it'll really add uh, tenderness because that it gets kind of tough and chewy and also it'll allow our spice blend to penetrate into the meat more while it's cooking. So let's do that right now. Okay? Okay, so I've got three racks of ribs right here. You can see them, beautiful looking. On the back side, this is where that membrane is that I want to remove. Again, a lot of people leave it there, but it ends up being very rubbery and tough when you chew on it, which takes away the whole process of making your ribs tender. Also, if I put my spice blend right here, it's not going to permeate very well that, that wall, that membrane. So I want to remove that. So easy way to do that. Again, is to use a paper towel, okay? And try to grab one of these ends on here. And if you can do it in one piece, that's great because you don't want it to tear. But if it does, it's not a real biggie. So you can see this membrane here I just pulled up. To get it started. And I'm going to grab it with this paper towel. Okay, and I'm going to pull. Try to get it off one piece if we can. Okay, see it here in a minute. See, I'm pulling it up. I'm removing it. There it is. See that membrane? Pulling it, pulling it, try to keep up. It's ripping a little bit. Sometimes they get cut. It's okay. I'm going to remove that whole membrane. And do this with all of our ribs. So you can see that. It's like silver skin or membrane. You can't really chew on that, and it's not going to let our spices go through. But now that we've removed it, it's going to be a lot more easier to eat, and also the spices will be able to penetrate. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Let's try another one here. Again, turn it over. You can see it right there. Try to get it started on one end. Use your paper towel because it is kind of slippery and wet. Pull it up. Get it started. And then just tear it up. Again, trying to keep it in one piece if possible. And it sounds a lot more difficult than it really is. Because once you get started with it, you just got to pull really hard to get it going. But once it starts, it just pulls right off. Easy peasy. And it will make such a big difference in your ribs and your guests will enjoy it. Okay, get rid of that and then we'll do it on our third one. Okay, turn it around, pat it dry, use my little knife here to get it started. That membrane off that first bone there a little bit. Grab it and 
pull it off. Whoop, this one ripped. And maybe I can still catch it. Nope, so if it does pull in two, not a biggie. We'll pull the first part off. And then we'll go back and get this little second part that we missed. There we go. Okay, now we're ready to season. Okay, our third step is just to season the ribs, but I want to cut them first because I need them to be able to fit into my sous vide bags. You know, if you're using any type of bag, it almost fits a whole one, but um, some people uh, cut it into portions, two to three ribs each for a portion and do it that way. That way they, when they're done, they can freeze them and they can continue to use them. Or you can just cut them in half so they fit in the bag. Your choice. All right, and when you're going to cut them, just kind of, I'm going to do them in half, so I'll find the middle here, go down between the ribs through the meat, and that's it. Got two racks there, and we can continue to do this with our others. Again, somewhere in the middle, cut down through it. If you want, put it into twos and threes and make them into portions, that's fine too. Maybe I'll do that with this one. Okay, so I got a two rib portion here. Then I'll make another two rib portion on this side. Okay, so you can do it like that if you'd like, or just leave them in half. All righty, now we got to season them generously. So let's do that. Okay, now that we've got our ribs generously seasoned and ready to go, we're going to have to bag them, put them in our, their bags. Now, once you bag them, you don't have to cook them right away. You could put them in the refrigerator for up to 12, 14 hours, 24 hours, and let them, you know, marinate a little bit in that dry rub, and really pick up some of those flavors, or maybe it's not conducive to when you want to cook it. Or you can go directly into your sous vide cooker and start the process. We're going to cook these for about 12 to 14 hours. Longer is okay as well, just makes them more tender. Another tip I want to tell you is, uh, once you bag them up, if you know at the end you're not going to be smoking them, more like grilling them or finishing them in the oven, you could add a few drops of liquid smoke to each bag. I would say about four drops, quarter of a teaspoon in there, or an eighth of a teaspoon, and then as it cooks it'll pick up that smoky flavor and show in the results at the end. Okay, so let's bag them. So I'm going to put my racks right in here. This is my half rack. So I'll put that one in there. I could add another half rack to it. And we're going to bag all these up, and then we're going to get them in our cooker, okay? Okay, now that we have our ribs all packaged up into our sous vide bags, we're ready to put them into the cooker and start the cooking process. As you can see behind me, I have my sous vide cooler, which I showed in a previous video how to make. I'm going to put them in there for 12 to 14 hours minimum, and they're going to be really tender. Now, when you add it into your cooking pot, you can use a bag that seals, which is what I'm going to use, the water immersion method to get all the air out, or you could use a vacuum sealer to seal your bags. But instead of having them all float around in that cooler, I'm going to be using a rack. I showed this in the video when I made the uh, sous vide cooler. It's adjustable, and this is going to hold them upright. You see, I can put it right inside there, and it'll hold the bag up. You know, so to hold it, I could put one, two, three, four, five, six racks in here. So I'm going to put all my ribs in there. I could add other things if I want to do beef short ribs. I'll throw in some chicken for a couple of hours to cook while the cooler is cooking the ribs. So this rack is going to be very helpful. As I mentioned, we're cooking at 160 degrees for 12 to 14 hours. But you could continue longer, 20 hours, 24 hours, just going to make them a lot um, more tender. So let's get those in the cooker right now. Okay, as you can see, I've got my ANOVA cooker here at 160 degrees. I'm going to set the timer for 12 to 14 hours as soon as I get my ribs into the cooker. So what I'm going to do is I just have to open up my lid here. You can see that the water is circulating really nice. I'm going to put in my rack that I'm going to make for an adjustment. Make it the size of the cooler. Put that in there. Nice and warm. Then I'm going to add my first bag of ribs. Okay, I'm going to use the um, water immersion method to get all that air out. And I'll add my other bags and we're ready to start cooking. Okay, so now that we've cooked our easy barbecue ribs for, you know, 12, 14, 16 hours, somewhere in that range, they're done. So we would just remove the, water, the, the sous vide bags of ribs from the water bath. Okay, and then let me go into the last step, which is finishing. 
But, however, when you remove the bags, if you're not going to serve them immediately, you know, you want to save them, that's fine. You can easily place the sealed sous vide bags of ribs into a large container of cold water with ice to chill them down thoroughly, which is exactly what I've done here. You see the fat has started to congeal. Once they've been cold, you know, through that ice water bath, I've removed them and you can store them in your refrigerator up to five days until needed. So this is great, something you can do in advance and then just pull them out when you're ready to serve those. You just have to reheat them either by dropping them back into you know a warm sous vide bath or you could take them out of the bag wrap them in aluminum foil and put them in the oven to bring them back up the temperature again they're already cooked we just need to do the finishing step okay so the last step finishing if you're going right from your sous vide water bath you just remove the bag the ribs from their sous vide bag and pat dry with a paper towel and then you need to decide, are you going to grill or broil them in the oven for that finishing step? Okay, if you're gonna grill the cooked ribs, you heat your gas or charcoal grill to high, use a pastry brush to coat the ribs with barbecue sauce, place them on the grill racks and cook until the sauce is caramelized a couple of minutes. Watch the ribs carefully though, you don't want that sauce with all that sugar in it to burn. Then you turn and repeat. When done, remove them from the grill, let them rest for about five minutes before you serve. If you're gonna broil them, you heat your oven, broil it to high, same thing, pastry bust, put on some barbecue sauce, put it on aluminum foil lined you know, baking sheet so you don't have to clean it afterwards. Place the ribs under the broiler and cook until the sauce is caramelized. About one to two minutes there too. Watch the ribs, again, they don't want them to burn. Turn the ribs, repeat, and keep them going until they're nice and charred and caramelized. Get that bark going. Then remove them, let them rest for five minutes and to serve. Now the serving step is you wanna paint them one last time with a layer of sauce, slice the ribs apart, and serve. Maybe with a little extra barbecue sauce on the side. Okay, let's see what that will look like. Hey, again, if we've cooled those down, we need to reheat them before we can put them under the broiler or on the grill. Take them out of our bags, pat them dry, get rid of some of that moisture. Okay, and then we're just going to place them on some aluminum foil. Okay, close those up, make a little tent out of them, sides up, this up, this up. And put them on our pan and throw those right into the oven to bring them back up to temperature so that we can finish them. Okay, so now that we have our ribs up to temperature, as I mentioned, we're just gonna slather them with your favorite barbecue sauce. Oops, put it on there, generous. And then we're gonna turn them over, make sure we get the sides and the back. Turn those over. Look at those, boy, they smell wonderful. Whoops, smell delicious. They're already starting to come off the bone here so I know they're nice and tender we're just going to finish them by getting them some char and caramelizing this sauce so remember there's two different ways one under the broiler and two on your grill so let's do that right now Okay, so as you can see now we have our two ribs, the one that was grilled and the one that was broiled in the oven. And again, as they're cooking, we're gonna be basting them all the time to keep them nice and moist. Don't they look great? Now the only thing you have to do is cut them and go ahead and serve them. So again, to cut them into individual pieces, just go down in between the bones, nice and tender. You can put them on there. There's a grilled one. And then we'll put on a broiled one. Serve it with a little extra barbecue sauce or even give it another little paint if you'd like. And there you go. Wicked easy sous vide barbecued ribs. Okay, but as we know, the real proof is in the pudding. So here I have one of each. Let's test them out. Mm. Mm. It's not fall off the bone like a pot roast, but it is so tender and juicy. All right, sous vide really keeps that moisture in there. Mmm, caramelized egg. I mean, you can see the fat on there. 
excuse me, you can see the, the fat and the meat on there and the juiciness. Mm. You gotta try this. Bye. Thanks for watching.